டாக்டர் கே பழனிவேலு ப்ரொஃபஸர் அட் த சென்டர் ஃபார் என்வாயன்மெண்டல் ஸ்டடீஸ் அண்ட் டேரக்டர் ஆஃப் சென்டர் ஃபார் கிளைமேட் சேஞ்ச் அண்ட் டிசாஸ்டர் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் அண்ணா யூனிவர்சிட்டி சென்னை He obtained his PhD degree from Indian Institute of Technology Madras Chennai. He worked as project officer for a brief period at IIT Madras and moved on to the Center for Environmental Studies Anna University in 1992. He was a visiting professor at Chungam National University South Korea during 2007. He has been teaching courses on environmental chemistry, environmental pollution control and instrumental methods of analysis since last 27 years. He has guided 75 students for ME and MSc. 4 MPhil, 2 MS and 15 PhDs. He has published 135 papers in journals and 90 in conference and symposiums. He has received several awards in national and international levels. Uh, welcome to the lecture series on chemistry of environment. In the previous uh, lecture, we discussed about the importance of atmosphere, how it is classified an uh, important chemical species in the different regions of the atmosphere. and a brief introduction to the chemical reaction taking place in the atmosphere and today we are going to discuss one of the very very important reactions taking place in the atmosphere namely photochemical reaction or photochemical processes what is this the absorption of light by chemical species in the atmosphere is a photochemical process and especially in the light absorbed as uv rays comes from the solar light and this will bring out a variety of reactions called photochemical reactions so photochemical reactions in short absorption of light by variety of chemical species ultimately leading to chemical reactions so photochemical reactions which are induced by intense solar radiation play a very important role in determining the nature and ultimately the chemical species going to remain in the atmosphere is determined by this photochemical process just to consider an example nitrogen dioxide is one of the uh, very very active photochemical species found in the unpolluted atmosphere i'm sorry in the polluted atmosphere and is an essential participant in a smog formation process leading to uh, one of the important air pollution episode namely photochemical smog just to, uh, take an example of this the nitrogen dioxide may absorb light energy and producing an electronically excited molecule as per, as shown here the nitrogen dioxide by absorbs light hatch new indicates it's a light uh, absorbing reaction that leads to nitrogen dioxide with a excited one marked by asteroid or star this indicate this type of chemical species are in the electronically excited molecule or unstable and they cannot remain a stable compound in the atmosphere they have to lose the excess energy by variety of chemical reactions and lose it and the various ways of uh, losing the excess energy these molecule present in the atmosphere is through various ways one is physical quenching that is loss of energy to another molecule or atom by physical quenching followed by dissipation of the excess energy in the form of heat energy for example o2 molecule with the excited will interact the third body atom like a nitrogen present atmosphere and it is transferred in the heat energy and becomes a normal molecule this is one way of losing excess energy that is physical quenching the other one is luminescence these chemical compounds may lose the excess energy by emitting light may be a phosphorescence fluorescence or chemiluminescence any one of this one especially in the phosphorescence fluorescence are predominant fluorescence instantaneous emission of light is known as fluorescence and if there is a delayed emission of light after absorption is called phosphorescence so this luminescence emission is again one way of losing excess energy and the excited molecule may also undergo dissociation for example the oxygen molecule in the excited state may be unstable and may undergo dissociation to form two molecules of atom of oxygen this is atomic oxygen 
So, dissociation also mainly to excess energy loss. And there is a possibility of photo anodation through loss of electrons also possible. The n 2 molecule lose its uh, energy by dissociating to n 2 plus plus electron. And sometimes the electromagnetic radiation with the low energy like infrared region also may excite a molecule and for example, carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases is one of this one and carbon dioxide may absorb light in the infrared radiation region and become excited molecule carbon dioxide. This carbon dioxide molecule loses the excess energy in the form of heat and becomes normal carbon dioxide molecule. So, why this is happening if you look at it really these IR light they do not have sufficient energy to break the chemical bond and also not have sufficient uh, one to gain vibration and rotational energy also. Okay. So, ultimately what happens is the IR light whatever absorbed by this molecule is no chemical reactions only conversion of heat. So, light energy in the form of infrared radiation is converted into heat energy and this type of reaction is responsible for what is called global warming or greenhouse effect and that is mainly responsible for the consequent climate change. So, this is also one of the very very important reactions like carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases like methane in the atmosphere is goes on increasing and ultimately converts the infrared light into heat energy that is the reason for global warming. This is also one part of reaction taking place in the atmosphere through photochemical reactions. So, atmospheric oxygen present the atmosphere so also undergoes chemical reaction in the atmosphere especially in the excited uh, oxygen molecule that is O 2 star is gets converted into ozone by chemical reaction because there is a splitting of molecular oxygen to atomic oxygen and this can interact again with the molecular oxygen to form ozone. This is one of the very very important reaction as shown here. The ozone also may undergo decomposition again to form molecular oxygen and atomic oxygen in the excited state. This species is again active and may bring out other photolysis reaction in the atmosphere especially in the troposphere this is possible and especially this reaction decomposes reaction as uh, with the UV light about uh, less than 315 nanometer. And also atmospheric nitrogen present in the atmosphere is also as a oh, variety of reaction absorbing light and gets dissociated into nitrogen atom. But when compared to oxygen the possibilities are very very less. Okay. But this is happening in the high altitude in the lower part of the atmosphere the splitting of nitrogen molecule into nitrogen atom is very rare, but whereas it is possible in the case of oxygen where molecular oxygen is split into atomic oxygen and that leads to formation of the very important ozone in the stratosphere. So, in the lower atmosphere whereas the nitrogen splitting is possible only in the higher altitude uh, uh, above 100 kilometer onwards. Another important very very important uh, radical species formation is happening in the atmosphere is hydroxyl radical formation. Radical species that is with the unpaired atoms normally the dot indicates this is a radical species free radical species very highly active species. One of the important radical species is hydroxyl radical. Water in the atmosphere undergoes again photolysis direct photolysis reaction forming hydroxyl radical OH dot. Also the photolysis of nitrous acid vapor but the water molecule also can bring out the formation of hydroxyl radical H O dot by this chemical reaction. So, these radical formation in the troposphere is very very important that is in the unpolluted troposphere hydroxyl radical is produced as a result of photolysis of ozone also. Ozone can absorb light 
and go dissociation as I told you before this atomic oxygen can react with water again to generate hydroxyl radical. So, hydroxyl radical is generated in the lower atmospheric part especially in the troposphere through photolysis of water through photolysis of nitrous acid as well as reaction with the ozone with the water everything all these things brings out hydroxyl radical in the atmosphere. And this species free radical species with the unpaired electron is one of the very very important chemical species. And these free radical species are very important in smog formation. We are going to see a little later how this smog is formed in the atmosphere. For example, any hydrocarbon molecule if it is present along with atomic oxygen and molecular oxygen that leads to uh, alkyl peroxyl radical. This species is formed. Peroxyl means excess oxygen. And this species acetaldehyde again on photolysis lead to the formation of methyl radical species and two methyl radical species joins that is a chain termination reaction leading to the formation of this compound. The chain termination is the end of the reaction. Usually in the free radical species with the dot molecule is a chain propagating reactions. They bring out they will continue the reactions take it further till everything is destroyed completely. So, till that time in any reaction these type of hydroxyl radical or alkyl peroxyl radical or methyl radical is there the reaction will continue and suppose this type of reaction takes place that is the end of the termination reaction in the atmosphere. So, smog formation this reaction is very very important that is the radical species and radical species involving hydroxyl and hydroperoxyl radical is also very important the atmosphere of reactions and as I told you they are all formed through a variety of photochemical reactions and the formation of ozone takes place is represented by this equation in the atmosphere ozone through nitrogen dioxide NO2 by absorbing UV light get split into nit NO and atomic oxygen this atomic oxygen also can combine with the molecular oxygen in presence of a third body atom like nitrogen leads to the formation of ozone. So, these species also formed through nitrogen dioxide uh, that is ozone is again one of the active species in the troposphere. So, next these free radical species especially hydroxyl radical if it is formed in the atmosphere what will be the reactions next and these radicals free radical species are very very highly reactive species they react with different type of organic compounds. And in the atmosphere due to various pollution we have saturated hydrocarbon compounds like methane and also we have unsaturated compounds like ethylene, acetylene these also present the atmosphere and both the species that is saturated hydrocarbon and unsaturated hydrocarbon is capable of reacting with this hydroxyl radical species in the atmosphere. First let us see how the saturated hydrocarbon reacts with this hydroxyl radical ok. If methane is present methane ethane type of compounds are present these hydroxyl radical reacts with by removing one hydrogen atom in the saturated hydrocarbon that is abstraction of hydrogen atom in this reaction that is the initiation reaction. So, hydroxyl radical with a free radical reacts with this and generate methyl radical. So, see once these type of radical species is generated it goes on continuing the reaction that is a chain propagation step. So, this methyl radical reacts with molecular oxygen again in presence of a third body atom like uh, nitrogen and gets converted to a methyl peroxyl radical CH 3 OO dot that is oxygen is added to this and this species is formed. Again you see here this is again a radical species that will again continue the reaction. So, this methyl peroxyl radical reacts with the nitric oxide and 
remove one oxygen from this form this radical species again. So, this species further reacts with the ozone generate various species chemical species and this type of reactions will continue again if NO2 is present that lead to this compound. This is one of the very very important compound PAN is formed because of this formation. So, any hydrocarbon NO, NO2 are present that is likely to form this PAN compound peroxyacetyl nitrate compound. So, saturated hydrocarbon if they are present in the atmosphere can react with the hydroxyl radical and generate these type of variety of chemical species. And other saturated hydrocarbons like formaldehyde, tolibin, if they are also present in the atmosphere, they will react and gives hydroperoxyl radical like this. Okay. So, formaldehyde reacts with hydroxyl radical, generate this radical species, which in turn can react with molecular oxygen and forms hydroperoxyl radical. Similarly, the tolibin molecule saturated methyl group is attached to benzene tolibin that also behave as a saturated hydrocarbon can react with hydroxyl radical and generate tolyl radical species by hydrogen abstraction and bring out further reaction as before. So, any saturated hydrocarbon present in the atmosphere if hydroxyl radical is generated that will react and initiate its uh, degradation in the atmosphere leading to formation of variety of compounds including PAN aldehyde. Now, suppose unsaturated hydrocarbons are present what will happen to this like unsaturated means double bond and triple bond containing organic compounds if they are put into the atmosphere these hydroxyl radical also can react in fact compared to saturated they react much faster than the saturated. So, unsaturated hydrocarbons if they are present reacts faster and hydroxyl radical may attack this double bond and form this radical adduct again a dot is present you can see there that is again a reactive compound here what happens is here addition reaction is happening addition of hydroxyl radical across the double bond is happening. So, this radical adduct is formed again similar to molecular oxygen will be added leading to aldehyde oxidation products and then acid ultimately they will be converted into carbon dioxide that is the ultimate reaction formation of carbon dioxide. So, any hydrocarbon metal material is present whether it is saturated or unsaturated they will react with the hydroxyl radical and forms variety of products including various oxidation products if you see aldehyde next acid and ultimately carbon dioxide and water is the ultimate products. Atomic oxygen also similarly react with this biradical species generation leading to this and alkenes are much more reactive than the saturated one undergoing reaction with the hydroxyl radical. So, this reaction is very fast and the mechanism proceed by addition reaction whereas, in the saturated hydrocarbon it is a hydrogen abstraction whereas, here it is addition across double or triple bond. The reason is the hydroxyl radical acts as the electrophilic reagent as to a high density electron across the double bond or triple bond then the product form reacts with the oxygen as in the case of before and leading to different variety of products. For example, hydroxyl radical reacts with this compound forming this radical species again which reacts with the oxygen as before as I told you before giving this alkyl peroxyl radical. Here it is ethyl peroxyl radical is formed which is a again a radical species unstable it undergoes further reaction and it goes on in the atmosphere. So, alkynes there is a, a triple bond compounds like acetylene also react similarly and further oxidation products also formed one of the in 
important products formed if alkynes are uh, 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 for example, asclene is present glyoxol may be formed that is a aldehyde compound. This will be oxidized further formic acid will be formed and that will be further oxidized to form carbon dioxide and water. So, this is a series of products formed through double bond and triple bond compound. Similarly, if uh, benzene that is aromatic compound is present that also reacts in the addition reaction way the hydroxyl radical and bring out ultimately various aldehyde acid and carbon dioxide is the ultimate product that is happening in the atmosphere. So, to summarize the variety of photochemical reactions taking place in the atmosphere any volatile organic compounds if they are present in the atmosphere like uh, saturated hydrocarbon or unsaturated hydrocarbon they will undergo reaction with hydroxyl radical generated through photochemical process that attacks ultimately leading to formation of intermediate products like aldehydes or ketone next stage acids and ultimately carbon dioxide will be formed and water will be formed because of the uh, oxidation of hydroxyl radical taking place in the atmosphere that destroys almost all hydrocarbons. But there are possibility of intermediate compounds to be formed that we will discuss.